It's Master Chef. We're looking for a great amateur cook who can make it as a professional. Someone who can turn out exceptional food. Bottom line is, I'd love to win this competition. I really believe Master Chef can change my life. This is one tough competition. I'm definitely here to win. Whoever wins, it'll change their life. Cooking doesn't get tougher than this. These six amateur cooks all want to become a top chef. But only one will get through to the quarter-final. Six people who want to live their dream. Six people who believe they can change their lives and become a professional cook. I want to see something special from someone today. I want to see somebody get beyond fry, bake, grill. Welcome to MasterChef. What we want from you today is pretty simple. One plate of food that will demonstrate to John and I that you are actually cooks. We have got six of you. At the end of this round, there will be three left. You've got 50 minutes. Let's cook. The contestants have to invent and cook a dish from any of the ingredients in front of them, which include lamb neck fillet, prosciutto ham, peas, broad beans, tomatoes, potatoes, feta cheese, mint, and red wine. Marcia, what are you making for us? Broccoli and cheese soup. I would have preferred Stilton, but there's no Stilton, so I'm trying to use feta. Is it right to come on a cookery competition and substitute an ingredient in a classic soup, such as broccoli and Stilton soup? Why not? You can create your own inventions. Yorkshire girl Marcia enjoys putting her own twist on classic dishes. I like to think I'm quite inventive. I do like to try and experiment a little bit. Julian, how good are you? I think I'm good. My fiercest critic is my wife. She is French, and, you know, the French greatest nation of cooks in the world, really, aren't they? Ooh! Sorry. Controversial. Sorry, Gordon. French food lover Julian has grand plans for his cooking future. I have this vision that we're going to move the family, get a big property, which I can convert into a cooking school, uh, and that really is my focus and my vision. Ladies and gentlemen, you have had 20 minutes. I started cooking when I first went to university. I bought a mountain of books and it just came from there. Student Sam's recent passion for cookery knows no boundaries. Which style of food is your real love? I love Italian food, I love French food, I love um, Asian cuisine, Indian food. Is there a cuisine you don't enjoy? I don't think there is, no. Advertising consultant Nicole has already given up her job to follow her foodie dream. I've really enjoyed my time in advertising, but now I think I can perhaps now pursue a, a career in cooking. What style of cook are you? I am all about flavour. I'm not massively complicated, and I hope it would look good on the plate. Just over 20 minutes left to go. What's, what's your greatest love in food, Mark? Great English classics, but we've, you know, brought up to date. 36-year-old Mark has been inspired by food from an early age. I believe in um, keeping things simple, you know, using what's in season at the time. My parents were fruit and vegetable merchants, so I grew up surrounded by fresh produce. When it comes to cooking, Jeremy likes to experiment. My style of cooking is kind of erratic, really. I just love trying anything out. Why are you here on MasterChef? I'm here to win it. You think you can win it? Um, it's a competition, and I think I can. I've got a pretty good chance. You have one minute.
student Sam hopes his lamb wrapped in prosciutto with minted potatoes and a tomato sauce will be a winning combination. I like the spiciness that's coming in and the sweetness of those tomatoes, but there's not enough of that tomato flavour. You don't get the flavour of the herbs coming through from the potatoes and you get a touch of raw garlic. French food lover Julian is serving lamb wrapped in prosciutto with a red wine reduction. It's a very, very good sauce because it's rich, it's deep in flavour, it's well seasoned. I'm really impressed. Your lamb's cooked to perfection. Hint of more sweetness coming in the broad beans. It's good cooking. Experimental cook Marcia has risked it all on a broccoli and feta cheese soup. It's a nice texture. It's well seasoned. Good flavours. It's when you taste things like this, you understand why broccoli and Stilton soup work so well. Yeah. Because I don't feel that broccoli and feta soup does work that well. Nicole's dreams of a new career rest on her lamb, peas and broad beans served with a lemon and mustard vinaigrette. It's very clean and very refreshing. It's lemon, a little bit of mustard, and actually they're not powerful, but they are cleansing. At least you've been gutsy with your dressing. I think the flavours are good. Fusion cook Jeremy is hoping his lamb stuffed with cheese, served on a mint pea puree, will get him through to the next round. There are some really, really good flavours there. The, the, the flavour of the pea, the lamb is tasty, the potatoes are well cooked. Sweet lamb, really, really salty feta, sweet mint, sweet pea. I find this a bit confused. English food lover Mark has cooked lamb, potatoes, peas and a red wine sauce. It's lamb with peas and broad beans and potatoes. Uh, a little bit of red wine sauce, which is slightly bitter, and it's not filling me with excitement. I love the sweet peas and broad beans against the lamb. It's lovely. And I think your lamb is overcooked, but only slightly. That red wine sauce is a little bit harsh. Good cooking. Difficult judging decision. Off you go. I love that food in here today. There's a couple of people I think have real star quality. There was some good cooking, don't get me wrong, but I also think there was some bad cooking. I think Sam's uh, too inexperienced. I actually think he cooked his lamb okay. Bits of raw garlic all the way through it, just a touch of herb, little potatoes on the side. <sighs> no, not quite. I'm happy to knock Sam out at this stage. Julian's plate, that sauce was great, and the lamb was cooked very well. Good cooking. The flavours he had on the plate were very, very good. Uh, Julian. Julian can cook. He loves cooking. Yeah, let, let's see what else he's got. Yeah. If we are going to have uh, a rout today, it's uh, Marcia, isn't it? That soup was with potatoes and lemon juice and feta cheese and broccoli. I felt today Marcia was real fingers crossed cooking. I like the textures and the flavours of that soup. She took a gamble today and it did not pay off. Maybe I should have been a bit more adventurous with what I was doing. But I'll just try to be true to myself, really. OK, Marcia's out. Marcia goes. Sam's out, Marcy's out, Julian's in. We haven't discussed Nicole. No. 
Nicole made us a piece of lamb on top of some crushed potatoes. The flavours of the dressing made the dish. She sounds like she knows what she's doing. Let's take a punt on her because I like those flavours. Yeah. Yeah? Mark's plate of food was unremarkable. A very wishy-washy split red wine sauce and the lamb completely overcooked. And I don't think Mark cooks enough to get him through to this competition. Personally, I, I don't feel that about him. His sauce wasn't very nice. The lamb's only slightly overcooked. I can think of worse cooks than him. I was pleased with, the, with, with what I did. Uh, I was a little bit disappointed I overcooked the lamb slightly. Jeremy cooked a piece of lamb filled with the feta cheese on the crushed minted potatoes. There was flavour in there. Jeremy's cooking is very confused. Jeremy had twice as many ingredients on the plate as Mark did. Do we want somebody who's unremarkable? Or do we want somebody who's a bit more adventurous? Mark is a classic, classic cook. Now, I know who I would bet on. We know what we're looking for, and three of you are staying, and three of you are going home. Good standard of cooking today. Julian, we like your food. You're staying with us. Sam, Marcia, sorry for leaving us. Nicole, congratulations, Nicole, you're staying. Jeremy or Mark? Sorry, Mark. Congratulations, Jeremy. At the moment, I just feel relieved and happy to go through. This is one small step closer to my dream coming true. I've worked really hard for this, and I'm really pleased I've got through to the next round. We know these cooks can stand the pressure of MasterChef, but can they hold their own and become part of the well-oiled machine that is a professional kitchen? Will they love it? The heat, the stress, the strain? Who's gonna be the star of the show? Day two and the contestants arrive at the French restaurant Bordeaux, situated on London's prestigious Park Lane. Hello, how are you doing? Hi, I'm, Hi, I'm Oli, how are you? Nice to meet you. How are you? The kitchen is run by fiery French chef Oli Cuyo. As long as the food that goes in there is very, very, very good, then everyone's happy. If it's not very, very good, then it's, that's where it starts. <laughs> Getting a bit tricky. It's 12.30 and the start of a very busy lunch service. Julian and Nicole get the first orders. We got a, a, a scallops and a risotto. Julian's in charge of a tuna risotto and Nicole's looking after scallops with asparagus and cherry tomatoes. Talk to Nicole, make sure you both come on the pass at the same time, yeah? Nicole, how long for your scallops? Both Julian's risotto and Nicole's scallops are going to the same table, so need to be ready at exactly the same time. Yeah, it keeps coming through. With Julian 30 seconds away from plating, he checks on Nicole's progress. Nicole, how long? I don't know, I haven't ever done one yet. Four okay. minutes, I guess. And with Nicole not ready to plate up her scallops, Julian's risotto will be ruined. It's gone too, cooked too much. No, no, it was Right, get another plate. Um, it's overcooked because we've been waiting on the scallops. You got creamy and you got this here. Okay. Jeremy gets his first order. He's cooking chicken livers with portobello mushrooms and a poached egg, but he's not off to a good start. You put, you put cooked food onto a raw food. Did you have the raw livers on it? Yes. Yes. Well, let's try to kill someone today. Yeah? Oh, right. Raw, okay. raw food cooked food, yeah? I put the livers onto the same plate that I'd seasoned them on. So, raw livers, cook the livers, back onto the raw plate. Oh, good. Yeah, it's going to be hard work, eh? <laughs> Okay, you need three. 
Strawberry scallop. scallop. Um, let, let's keep it tidy here. Yeah? Okay. So, yeah. The orders are coming quite quick, so you just have to really concentrate. OK, one scallop's on order. It's the peak of service. Orders are flying in, and Nicole struggles to present her dishes to chef's high standards. I look uh, sloppy. OK, let's get another plate. Let's get another plate. We need a risotto. Yeah, just come in, chef. 30 seconds. In the heat of service, Julian begins to turn out great plates of food. Risotto, chef. That's very nice, huh? You got the chicken there, you got the mash. Jeremy is also impressing chef and making up for his earlier mistakes. Uh, risotto. That's good, huh? That's very good. After two hot and hectic hours, the contestants are done. But who would Ollie have back in his kitchen? Nicole needs to put more finesse into, uh, into the plating of what she does. It was hard work and it was fantastic. I, I really enjoyed it. Jeremy did very well. And he's pretty calm, he's pretty... He seemed pretty organised as well. I'd hate to get on the wrong side of Chef. I thought he was incredibly diplomatic with us today. Julian, I think he had a pretty shaky start, but I think, I think after that he, 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 found, he found some sort of, of, of rhythm and it was, it, was, it was very good. I got a bit of abuse from Ollie, but um, you just take it on the chin and get on with it. And... You know, you learn from your mistakes. I think Jeremy would be the one I would consider maybe possibly give, give a job. It's now back to MasterChef HQ to cook their own two-course meal. We have three good cooks in front of us here. We only have one quarter-final place. Your two courses, one hour, let's cook. Jeremy came out top in the pro kitchen, but his fusion style split the judges. Can he now get the combinations right with his own two courses? We need to know what, uh, what two dishes are going to make you the quarter-finalist. Right, I'm doing seared scallops on some sweet corn and ginger blini fritters served with a rocket salad and then the main course i'm doing lamb neck fillet again and this time hopefully i'm gonna simplify it a lot more you got a lump of cheese there mate yeah i'm gonna put some cheese in my lamb well again again that that that, make, that makes a change from yesterday Jeremy's cooking a, a starter of corn fritters and scallops and rocket. Actually, sounds quite delicious. And then he's got lamb with cheese in it again. Now, I just don't understand. It wasn't that successful yesterday. He likes a fusion style, what can you say? Nicole's flavours were a hit in the first round, but she struggled in the pro kitchen. Can she now prove she's got what it takes to become a quarter-finalist? You delivered big flavour for us yesterday. Have we got big flavour today? Today I'm cooking grilled cod with a garlic shellfish butter. And then for dessert, a chocolate almond tart with Kirsch cherries. How seriously do you want a life in food? Desperately, yeah. I, st I started off actually wanting to do this when I was at school. So I ended up in a different route. And 12 years down the line, I want out of that route. You've seen your mates? Yes. They're pretty good cooks? Yes. Are you better than them? Yes. classic dish with a piece of cod and then a seafood bun sauce around the outside and then we've got a chocolate and almond cake. Well, yum. In fact, big yum. Ladies and gentlemen, you've got just 15 minutes. Julian's classic French style impressed in the invention test. Can he do it again with his own two courses? What are we going to be eating today, Julian? OK, we're going to start with uh, an asparagus mousse, some parmesan chips, and followed by a pork tenderloin with a sweet mustard sauce and crispy spring greens. Julian, you, you, you talk very eloquently about food. You describe the food and the way you're going to cook it, which, of course, now gives us great expectation. Are you going to be able to deliver that expectation? Uh, my wife thinks they're good dishes. I hope you guys are going to think it's a good dish. Julian, to me, sounds like he's got elegant food. We've got asparagus mousse, we've got little parmesan fritters. In the main course, I like the idea of rich prunes and pork together. It sounds very, very good. Great dishes. Maybe attempting a little bit too much. Two minutes. 
lights, please. Ladies and gentlemen, step away from your benches, please. Jeremy is starting with scallops served on ginger blinis with rocket, followed by lamb stuffed with Wensleydale cheese on a bean and beetroot salad. Lots of ginger. Very, very nice flavour. Makes your mouth think you're going into something oriental. Pick up the sweetness of the scallop, little bit of heat of chilli, all working very, very well. I'm not a fan of fusion. You are. This one works. I love this. Apart from the rocket. Yeah. Flavour-wise, it's the greenness that comes out of that rocket, that grassiness against the ginger, which is a bit weird. Yeah. Take away the scallop, move in the lamb and cheese. It's really unattractive, but funny enough, I get your flavour and texture combinations. I actually enjoy eating, I just can't stand looking at it. I like the sweetness and sourness of your bean beetroot combination. And with the lamb and the salty cheese that goes with it, actually it works very, very well. Which is surprising, because it, it defies all rules of cookery. Is it good enough? Hopefully. French food lover Julian has made asparagus mousse with parmesan crisps, followed by pork with prunes, a sweet mustard sauce, chips and crispy cabbage. I like the flavour, the flavour is quite subtle. I like the cheesy parmesan, although they're a little bit bendy and not as crispy as I would like. I agree. The flavour is very, very subtle with that iron-rich asparagus, quite creamy, and then you get that sort of salty parmesan cheese finish. The texture of the crisp hold the whole thing together. I think it's a very, very brave thing to do. Let's do away with the mousse, bring in this pork. You know how to make sauces, my friend. Sweetness from the prune, iron from the cabbage, very well cooked chips, that Pork is cooked to perfection. I love that dish. It's great. Thank Very you. good. The kind words. Beautifully cooked, very rich pork. Depth of flavour that comes from the booze in the back of that sauce. A little bit of heat. I actually really, really like it. It's great. Thanks a lot. Would you like uh, a quarterfinal slot? Absolutely. Without a shadow of doubt. Nicole is hoping her cod and shellfish mane followed by a chocolate and almond cake with Kirsch cherries, will win her a place in the quarter-final. The fish is just slightly overcooked, mm -hmm. but the flavours of the potatoes with their skin on, the clam, the sweet mussels, the saltiness of those shrimps, is absolutely lovely. Thank you. I think we are but inches away from a stunningly good dish. Thank you. Let's move on. We've got cocoa and cherries and cream. And at first, I thought, got very little flavour. But it just keeps on coming. And now my, my mouth is full of cocoa, which is lovely, really lovely. The chocolate and almond flavours are just heavenly. I mean, they're just like a big hug. I love that. It's a lot lighter than it looks. What do you think it would take to progress through MasterChef? It takes guts and determination, and, yeah, I've got it in spades for, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be a really tough decision. Thanks very much. Off you go. I like these guys right from the start. I liked them yesterday. I think we had some excellent food today. All worked very, very hard. All got some good skill. Yeah, it's going to be a tough decision. I really enjoyed the first dish from Jeremy. I, I love those scallops 
with the ginger in the blini and the hints of chilli. It was the flavours of the yeast and I really enjoyed them. I don't agree that the rocket should have been there. Flavour-wise, it didn't really deliver what it should have delivered. And especially when you're talking about a most amazing thing, the scallop. It's a beautiful thing on its own. It shouldn't be that confused and it was confused. His main course, it was flavoured very, very well. It just looked wrong. Today I hope to show the judges that I know how to put flavours together and hopefully that that's enough for them to see what I'm capable of and, and want to see much more. There is a promising cook in there, but he won't be able to develop fast enough to challenge the other two. Julian is a classic French cook. His main course, little medallions of pork, prune on top, the rich sauce with the mustard and the Madeira in there, a little bit of cream, really well made, crispy cabbage, chips on the side, great combination, very good main course. His asparagus mousse, iron, 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 goodness of asparagus, and then the sharpness of the cheese. It's, it's, it works. I think I was being re reasonably ambitious with my cooking today, um, but there's still more to come. I love Nicole's food. The flavours in the sauce of that fish, that buttery sauce, were delicious. It was a very, very good main course in the making. And as an amateur, somebody coming out of their own kitchen, that is actually a pretty good dish. Love the flavours again in her, in her chocolate pudding. The cherries with the booze in them, releasing lovely juice with a bit of heat. But it didn't look great. But it was really delicious. That girl has promise. I hope to show them today a bit about what motivates me as a cook and a bit of passion. And I, I can't tell you whether that came through or not. I'm really hoping it did. I think they could both uh, make it for a quarter final. That's the problem. So we're going to make a decision. Who's it going to be? I love the direction both their food's going. Whoa, big call. Big, big call. We have made the decision, it was difficult, but we have made our decision because we've only got one quarter-final place. Our winner, our quarter-finalist. is Julian. Congratulations. Fantastic. Well done. I mean, I'm disappointed, of course, but, you know, it's been brilliant. I've really enjoyed it. Would have been really good to go through to the quarters but you know, Julian obviously got that spot and well done to him. It's elation, I, uh, I'm trembling, I uh, want to laugh, I want to cry. I am really, really pleased, I'm really happy. I've planned my menus to evolve, to get better with a, a fair wind and the will of God. Maybe I'll get there, we'll see. Julian will be back for the quarter-final, where he'll face three other exceptional cooks.